Hey y'all, it's Gunnar Deathridge. Welcome back. Today we are going to be creating something that is very fun. We are doing like a very dark academia fall Harry Potter style cape. It's like a mixture of a cape and a blazer. It is gender neutral. It can definitely be fitted to the body. It is a little bit more of an intermediate pattern, but it is a very lengthy tutorial that is very easily broken down for you. I did shoot the reveal of this jacket at Universal Studios in the Harry Potter part of it, just because they felt like it was super fitting and like a really fun way to kind of enter into fall. This is a really good pattern for people that are looking to like kind of get into blazers and coats and stuff because it's not super crazy. Also, this is a really good pattern if you've been looking to work with like wools or like really, really heavy fabrics, this pattern can handle it. Also, a link to the Patreon and the pattern shop for this specific pattern will be in the description of the video. So, let's get into it. Okay, let's get started. As you can see here, this is my front pattern piece. Mine is a little bit doctored here because this is my sample and we've actually made a few changes to this pattern piece since you guys have it. Yours will have the front facing connected here, so please ignore all my writing up here, but know that the front facing for the jacket is now attached to the front and you'll see that on your pattern piece. This is just my sample. So to start the process, I find that it's easiest to attach the pockets now just because, you know, it starts to get bulky later and like while you have everything flat, it's a really good time to do so. So in order to attach the pockets, we're gonna start with the pocket flaps and I am just going to pin the two of the pieces of the pocket flaps. You should have cut four of them out. I'm gonna pin them together with the right sides facing and I'm just gonna pin all the way around the edges here. Now we're gonna be sewing this whole area, the side up to the point over and down on the other side, we're gonna leave the top open. So I'm just gonna pin these and then I'm gonna stitch. Now, this next part's not necessary, but the, for the pockets, because we're not sewing them anything, for the pockets, we're not doing a lining behind them or anything, we are just gonna be sewing them straight onto the front. I am gonna overlock the edges of mine. You can just do a zigzag stitch or you can use a pinking shear, whatever you want to, but if you're using a fabric like me that frays very easy, then it's just nice to secure the edges. So I am going to overlock this. I actually might overlock all of my pieces. You can choose to do this, but it is not necessary. But if you're using a fabric like me that just kind of frays really easily, it might be nice for you to do a little overlock stitch on that just to make sure that everything uh, stays in nice shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch the outsides of this and overlock around the edges. And then I will show you guys how to sew them on. Okay, so this pattern is half of an inch seam allowance unless it's marked otherwise. So let's just stitch half of an inch starting on the side here. Now these are gonna be a focal point, so make sure that you take your time on this. have my pieces sewn here. Now I'm just going to trim away my seam allowance. I think it just makes it easier to turn it right side out. I'm just gonna get rid of that. Now I'm gonna turn it right side out. And you wanna make sure that you press all of the corners out nice and beautiful. I just use closed scissors. This is definitely not the right tool for this, but you know, I'm a home sewer. I grew up in a little house in the middle of nowhere. My grandma said, use whatever you got around you. So if you don't have all the right tools, don't worry. You can have fun with it and still get the right outcome. So, all right, this looks nice. I'm just gonna press the edges nice and flat. Beautiful. This is really important. I'll give you my spiel now, but it is so imperative. You press your seams. It makes everything so professional, I promise. So respect your craft, press everything, it will change your life. So this is my piece here that is ready to be sewn on in a little bit. 
Uh, you can actually top stitch this right now if you would like to. I'm probably gonna go in and add a top stitch. I think it looks really professional. I have gone ahead and added my top stitch on here. I just wanted it to look as clean as possible. This is not necessary, but this fabric is one, it does press out beautifully, but I think it just kind of needs the top stitch. So everything I'll be doing today, I will probably go back in and top stitch just so you know. So I have the two pocket flaps. Now let's work on the pockets themselves. As you can see on here, there is a half of an inch seam allowance included all the way around. The only place that's not half an inch is the top, which is an inch and a half. Now there's an inch and a half because what we are going to do is we are going to fold this down a half of an inch, press it, and then fold it down another inch and press it. And then what we're going to do is top stitch across the top. Now we're gonna do this because it's getting sewn onto the front here and you want a really clean opening for your hand to go into if you decide to use it. So let's go ahead and do that. I am gonna start by folding in my outsides half of an inch and just pressing. Now, if you are someone that is very precise, you will have marked these so that you can make sure that everything is getting turned in the exact amount. If you're a little crazy and like to wing it like I do, you'll just freehand it. There's no right or wrong way. This is for you, but it is marked on there in case you wondered. So half of an inch. Also, if you're not familiar, this thing that I'm using is called an ironing ham. And it's just nice to be able to press smaller stuff or get a precise press. So I use one. You can get them at like Joanne or online, Amazon. Okay. So I folded this down the half of an inch. Now let's fold this down the rest of the way, the other inch. And like I said, you can, you can measure if you want to be really precise. This is at exactly an inch right now. Most people that sew can usually eye something. <laughs> Just like the a little talent that happens when you've been doing it for a while. All right. So now I'm going to, now that I've got this ironed down, I am gonna place two pins in here and I am just going to get this pinned in place. And now I'm gonna put a stitch all the way across the top of it, not down the sides yet, just along the top. And you might wanna make sure that your seam allowance is definitely tucked in there, but. Let's just back stitch across the top here. Just gonna hold that top flap down perfectly in place is what we're gonna do. Like so, like that. So now it's time to sew this on. Here's what you can do. Let's say that you want to be really precise with this. I can use a little bit of tracing paper. This is not necessary. Um, I do find it really helpful though. So I'll pull out a little piece of this tracing paper and I'm also going to use a, a small rotary wheel. Now I'm just going to hold my hand right below where we're going to place this, lift this up. Let's just pop this down in there. You can kind of see where the tracing paper is below the pattern. This is a little small, so I'll use two pieces of it. So this is basically like a transfer paper. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is place my hand here. I'm just gonna mark with this rotary wheel, putting a lot of pressure right over the lines. And this is gonna leave a little bit of chalk that will come off right where the pattern will go. Now, like I said, this isn't necessary. Most of the time, to be honest with you, I just eye this, but because it's a tutorial, I do want to be precise. When I remove the paper, you'll be able to see a faint little line here where I'm gonna place the pocket. So I've ironed the edges under because when we're sewing this down, we're just gonna to be top stitching this on essentially. We're just going to line everything up here. Now 
and I'm gonna top stitch from this, the top here, down the side, down on the bottom, and up on the other side. Not the top, because this is where the hand's gonna go in, or whatever else you're gonna use the pocket for, but you're just going to top stitch this pocket on now. So because this is a top stitch, I am gonna tell you to take your time. Thankfully, the pattern I'm using today on this cape is very forgiving. But let's say you're using something that shows a little bit more. This is a focal point. You absolutely want it to look crisp and clean. You might want to tuck the edges of that seam allowance under at the bottom. I like to do a couple extra back stitches just at the top of the pocket to hold it on. Now it is time to work on attaching the flap that's going to go above the pocket here. As you can see, the pattern has a flap placement, so you can actually just mark this if you want. You can use tracing paper. Honestly, sometimes I will just take my ruler and I will just measure. It's a full inch above this, so. I'm just gonna mark a full inch above this in a tailor's chalk. I like tailor's chalk because it disappears when you iron it. Very low consequence. As long as it's wax free. <laughs> if this is where we want the top of the flap to end up, I'm just going to drop the flap a half of an inch below it because remember we have half of an inch seam allowance built in here. So if it helps you, you can also do a half of an inch seam allowance here to show you where to place it. So let's just pop this here. I have it centered above my pocket. I'm gonna pin it in place. And now we're going to sew this at half of an inch seam allowance here. Now, if you can't gauge half of an inch because it's not next to this, you can draw it on here. I've kind of already done some pre-measuring and I know that this is about the half of an inch line for me. Afterwards, clip your stitches. Okay, so now it's sewn on here. What we're going to do is we are going to actually iron the flap so it faces down. And you want to get a good crispy line here. Beautiful. Now, I am going to do a little top stitch at the top. What you can do is start here, come down half of an inch, come all the way across the top and come down half of an inch. It's gonna keep the flap closed and it's also gonna keep it angled down. I think it looks the best when you do that. It's like a little, almost a rectangle, but not the whole side. So we will be adding on a button or a snap or something here. So it's gonna stay down, but I think the stitch helps the top of it just to kind of really stay in place. Now that we have done one side, we're going to repeat this to the other side of the front and do the same steps again. Now we are going to work on attaching our pocket and pocket lining in between the front piece and the side front piece. Everything does have notches to help you line it up. To begin, we are going to start by assembling the pocket lining with the side pocket facings. As you can see, there are two notches at the bottom and one notch at the top, they do line up. You should have cut four pieces for the pocket and four pieces for the pocket facing. For the pocket facing, I'm using the same exact fabric as the outside of the cape because I want to make sure that everything that is showing looks beautiful. For my pocket lining, I'm actually going to be using this satin because I like the way it feels when I put my hands in my pockets and I love the color combination. So I'm just going to pin the right sides facing to the pocket facing and I'm going to pin all the way down and then we are going to be stitching. The seam allowance here is half of an inch, just so we are aware. 
And we're gonna do this to all four pocket and pocket facing pieces. We're just gonna sew this at half of an inch. The whole way down. Now, after I do this, I am going to press this flat because you don't want a lot of bulk there, but you absolutely want it to feel nice and flat once the pocket is in. So now that we've done this, let's just press this open nice and flat. And then we're gonna do this to all four pieces. So now we're going to connect the pockets to the actual front here. As you can see, there are little notches here that line up. This is gonna help us to figure out where things go. A lot of the times people will cut little notches into the pattern at like quarter of an inch or a little bit less just to kind of show them where to line things up. You can absolutely do this. Um, so to start, I am going to line up the pocket facing over the front here. So to help me out, I am just gonna cut my little notches. They are very small little cuts and it's just to help line everything up. Super, super small, just enough to let me see what I'm doing. Now I am going to line up my pocket squares. I'm gonna put a pin right there where the notch is. Just as a little marker. Okay, so what we are going to do is a little tricky, but I promise that it's not that hard in theory. So we're basically going to be sewing a little rectangle right here. If it helps to visualize it, I am gonna draw the half of an inch mark, because we're at half of an inch seam allowance, right here and right down, okay? So this is essentially the shape that we're going to be uh, stitching on here. We're gonna go up, over, and over, a perfect little rectangle. And actually we're going to do this to the other side too. So one side of the pocket lining here, faced on here, right sides facing, we are going to stitch this little rectangle. So I'm just gonna stitch my rectangle here. When I get to the end of this rectangle, I'm gonna leave my needle inserted, lift the presser foot, move the fabric around. Now let's just stitch straight down. All right, and now stitch back towards the raw edge. Now you can see this little rectangle I have stitched here. I'm just going to snip at the edge right up to the point, okay? Don't cross over the stitch line here. I know it's kind of tricky to see. So we're just gonna snip right there at the edge. After I do this, I'm also just going to trim away any of the seam allowance in here so it's not bulky. But that snip to the edge is super important. Now that we have cut out our little triangle, I am just gonna flip this to the right side here. Now you'll see when you do this, you're gonna have this perfect little rectangle right here. Like this, perfect little rectangle. We just have to press it so that it stays in this perfect shape. Lots of pressing on this garment, but it, it is gonna be beautiful when we're finished, so. Give it a little press, all the way down. Now, if you like, you can do a little stitch right here, all the way up and over, just a little top stitch so that this is nice and crisp because this is basically gonna be a hidden pocket from the outside. So, if you'd like to do that, now is the time. Now we have half of the pocket lining sewn in. So now it is time to do the other half here. 
So what I'm gonna do is I am just going to line up the pockets right on top of each other, but I'm gonna take this one all the way to the edge. See what happens right there? That's gonna be our opening once the seam allowance is sewn. So I am just going to pin the pocket together all the way around the outside edge, just matching everything up all the way around the circular part here. Now, if you've never done one of these before, this is a really fun thing once you get it right. <laughs> you know, and it's really just precise pinning and sewing, that's all it is. But I always get really excited when I get finished and it looks really beautiful. All right. So we're just gonna sew now all the way around the outside edge. Don't sew this down to the outside garment. You wanna go, you know, this is its own freestanding thing. So just sew here all the way around and afterwards you can overlock it if you like. So now that we have our pocket finished on the front, it's still open here, but this is just gonna be treated as the same piece of fabric the whole way up. We are going to attach the side front. There are notches on here to show you where to align everything. So with our right sides facing, we are going to pin the side front to the front. As you can see, the pocket does exist under here. We're going to pin them together as one piece as we work our way up the whole way. Now you want to be really, really precise when you're sewing where the pocket is. You'll see why when we open it up, it's going to create like basically an invisible pocket. If you've ever seen those in a jacket or a coat and you've wondered how that's done, today you're going to learn. <laughs> now this does curve up a little bit at the top, so just pin this together. Okay, and we have the side front sewn onto the side. As you can see here, we have our nice little invisible pocket. It looks really, really beautiful. So now we are just going to repeat this to the other side. Now it is time to work on our back piece. Before we do the center back seam, that is the easy part, by the way, we are going to work on this weird shoulder dart. So essentially, we are creating the curve here of the shoulder with this dart. And in order to do this, it's probably helpful for you to mark on the pattern where the dart is. Like I said, you can use tracing paper to do this. I am just going to start by pinching the dart at the bottom and placing a pin and I'm gonna work my way up here. And I'm just gonna kind of maneuver the fabric around to match the curve. This can be a little tricky here, so take your time and use some pins, but it will be able to do it. Okay, once we've pinned the dart where we have got the curve nice and even, we are going to stitch this and then it's gonna leave us this like kind of like weird sleeve thing. <laughs> okay, I am just gonna stitch the dart. Okay, 
Okay, so afterwards you can see it's kind of, this is the center back here, right here. And it's created this curve, almost like a suit jacket arm. And the other bit down here kind of dips in a little bit like where an armhole would. So it's kind of like a fake sleeve, which is kind of fun. Now let's just make sure that we press this. If you need to clip this curve a little bit so that you can press it nice and beautiful. So basically this is what the curved dart does. It emulates a sleeve. It kind of like rounds out the back like a beautiful cape in the back. Okay, after we have done both of the back pieces, this like weird little dart here, we are going to stitch the center back seams together. So pin the right sides facing and then stitch the center back seam and afterwards press that open flat and beautiful. After we have completed this, we are going to do the exact same thing to the back lining pieces now. Now that our back lining is sewn together at the center back seam, we've done our shoulder seams here. It's time to add in our neck facing which is going to go right in this little bit here. You're gonna to need to use a lot of pins because this is on a curve. Now, I will also say this is usually when I add in my label. So if you're somebody that likes to sew in a little label at the back neck, this is definitely when you would do that. So I'm just gonna pin with the right sides facing, the neck facing to the back pieces, and then we are going to stitch. And afterwards, clip the curve and press open. If you're not familiar, three eighths of an inch is actually in between the quarter and the half inch mark. So I just kind of ride them in between the middle because my plate does not say three eighths of an inch. Now, when you're going around a curve, you want to make sure that you're not picking up any other random fabric down there. Afterwards, you want it to look like this. You want to give everything a good press and make sure that it looks great. Okay, let's address the back waist tab. You should have cut four of these. The purpose of this is that they're going to be sewn into the side seams of the front of the cape and they run behind your back. And we can add buttons back here, buttonholes, you can do hook and eyes, whatever. But the goal of these is for the front of the cape to fit your body really nicely. And so we don't want to lose any of that and have it hang super loose. So we're gonna create these little tabs. In order to do so, you're going to take two of them and pin them together with the right sides facing. You're going to pin all the way around. And we're basically going to stitch two of the long sides and one of the short sides together. After we do that, we're gonna trim the seam allowance. And then we're going to turn it right side out and press it. Then you can top stitch it if you want it to look really nice. And then we're going to repeat it with the other one. So the seam allowance here is half of an inch like the rest of it, so. Work your way around. After I have turned these right side out, I am gonna press them and then I can do a little top stitch. You're gonna do this with both of the back tabs and then we're just gonna set these aside. I'm just kind of prepping these out so that everything can get sewn in later. So now we are going to attach our upper collar to our under collar. So we are going to pin them with right sides facing and then we are going to stitch all around the front, the top and the side, leaving the bottom open so that we can turn it right side out. After you stitch this, you are going to trim away some seam allowance and then turn it right side out and press it. Now, it is important to note that the seam allowance here is 3 eighths of an inch. So when you're sewing it, make sure to be aware of that. The under collar is just a smidge smaller than the top collar, just so it pulls it in closer to the neck. So let's stitch.
We are going to work on sewing in the sleeve, which is also the back of the cape into the armhole here. Now we're going to be starting right here at the shoulder cap and we're gonna pin them together. There is going to come a point where we're gonna to have to pivot a little bit because this seam here turns into the front seam of the capelet. So there are notches on the pattern that will show you where to start stitching and where to stop stitching for the opening of the armhole. Okay, so I'm just gonna start down here at the bottom. This is my stopping point for the arm that we marked with a notch, and I'm just gonna work my way up. Now I am getting up here towards the dart that we have sewn in, and what we wanna do is make sure that we're not sewing any extra fabric in there. So this curve is gonna kind of determine the shoulder. So you wanna make sure that it's got a nice curve to it. Don't let any like weird points happen, but we're just gonna kind of round this over. Make sure that you kind of feel in to see if there's any fabric doubled over in there that doesn't need to be in the seam. This feels okay. I'm making my way down the shoulder now. All right, and now let's check our work. This is kind of the important part that you need to do to make sure that you haven't sewn something that you don't want to sew. If you are happy with what has been sewn and you like the way that it looks, you can then kind of trim off the seam allowance and then you can press everything. Okay, so we have the sleeve in. It's sewn down to this point we stopped at. As you can see, the shoulder is like nice and like rounded up through here. When this is on a body, it is going to appear like a sleeve, which is kind of exciting. The back is nice and sewn. Now it's just important to really go in and press everything. You really wanna clip any of this seam allowance here away that's gonna get in your way. Just cut it not super close, but especially around the cap where you're gonna to need to get in there. I just kind of went in and took the edge off of it. I just think it's gonna allow me to like really get in there and press this out beautiful. Okay, so let's take a moment to talk about the side front lining. There is a dart here on the side front lining that we do need to mark. So I am gonna use my transfer paper again to mark my dart here. I'm just gonna rip the paper up, insert for the dart, make sure the paper is laying flat, and now use my rotary. Right. Now we are going to stitch the darts in the side front lining. So now is when things start to get a little bit complicated as far as how many pieces we're working with. This is our front piece. This is our side front. This is like where we sewed the arm on. This is our side front lining. And we're actually going to be attaching the side front lining to the front here. And this is actually considered the facing because what will happen is this will roll under and this matches the neckline and this will then be the front, right? But in order to do that, we have to have the facing and the lining. So let's attach the side front lining to the front here. We're gonna use a lot of pins and then we're going to stitch. So pin these together and then let's stitch. Okay, so let's just stitch this here. We're at half of an inch seam allowance. After you finish this on one side, we are then going to be doing this to the other side of the front as well. So let's talk about where we're at now. So currently this is the front piece of the cape. This is my back and the other side of the front. And now we have our lining, side front lining sewn on here and our side front lining sewn on here. See, it's kind of starting to take shape. Now we're gonna start sewing our back lining onto the front. Now we're gonna treat this the same exact way. So as you can see here, this would be a shoulder seam. Look how those match up beautifully. And right here, these also match up beautifully. Let's use these as our guide. So essentially what we're going to do is do this the same way as we did the outside. And we're gonna pin the shoulder seam here, matching those up. And then we're just gonna work our way around the curve, making sure to stop at the same exact notch point as we did on the outside, because that's where our slit for the cape is going to stop. So we need to make sure that we're stopping in the same exact place. Okay. 
use a lot of pins. My lining is real slippery, so I need to use a lot of pins here. And if you need a little refresher, there is also a notch where to stop on this cape also. Actually, it's right here. The notch is right here to stop. down to my notch which is right there and this is our stopping point now it is time to sew this like weird curve like just like we did on the outside we are going to sew our curve here I'm just gonna start at my notch point also my machine comes unthreaded every time so if this happens to you you're not alone <laughs> All right. Just gonna make my way around our curve here. point here and then snip my thread and now we will repeat this to the other side okay so let's talk about the slit facing here this is actually for the back side of the slit so it is going to match up as you can see here it matches up here and it stops right up here underneath the slit so we're just gonna stitch this right onto here now I will say if you're using a fabric like me that likes to fray, I'm gonna overlock this edge and probably this one too, just to be safe, but you can also zigzag over the edge here. You could also bind it with a bias tape, just something to make sure that the edge does not fray. This is really just so that this is what shows on the outside of the cape and not the lining. I think that it's absolutely a necessary step, but if you don't feel like facing it, you also don't have to do it. It's your garment. Now it is time for our little back tabs to come into play. So this is currently the front and here's the side front lining. I know there's a lot going on in your pattern also, don't worry. We're kind of gonna tie up some loose ends right now. So the goal here is that like, we're gonna be flipping this over and then stitching this all the way up to where we stopped. This is the arm slit. But before we can do that, we are going to place the tabs in here. Now we're gonna angle them in so the raw edges will face out. There are little notches right there that show you where to place the straps. So let's just pop some pins here. Okay, so now we are at the point where our lining is basically attached to the cape, but nothing else is attached. Okay, so what we're gonna do is stitch the back lining to the back at the hem line here. Now, I do wanna say we are going to be leaving a gap right in the center here. You do need to make sure that it's big enough so that you can turn this garment right side out because this is gonna be our access point. I'm gonna leave mine pretty big here, and I'm just gonna pin on both sides so that I know where I'm leaving it. And I'm just gonna match the edge here and work my way around. And then we are going to be stitching the back lining to the back piece at the hem. Now, one thing I will say is that the hem of the back lining is actually a little bit shorter than the outside. And what will happen is when this is attached at the neck, it's going to pull this up a little bit. And that way we've got a little bit of the outside fabric facing inward. It's gonna kind of act as a facing and that way, you know, if the wind blows or you're moving, you only see the outside fabric there. I'm just gonna sew all of this at half of an inch along the bottom. Okay. 
Now this is my stopping point right here. I'm gonna leave this for my opening. Just gonna back stitch there, lift it out. And, and now I'm just gonna start on the other side of that opening and finish out the bottom edge. Okay, so now that we have done the bottom hems, the, the slits for the cape should still be open on both. Little flaps, free floating, and so is the neckline. So the next part of this is we're actually going to be stitching the collar into this neckline. So one thing to note is that the yoke in the back has the same seams here that align. So this is gonna be your marker on how to line everything up is that these seams here and here will line up. So this is actually creating your center front. It's gonna show you right here on the fold where your fronts are. Now, the collar does not go all the way to the very center of the fold. There is a little bit of a gap there in the front. I think it's about three quarters of an inch um, that is going to help be an overlay, almost like a little placket. So don't worry, it is not ever going to line up no matter how much you do to it. So I'm gonna start by pinning my collar in. Now I'm gonna pin it towards the inside here and I'm just gonna face it in. I'm gonna line it up there. If it helps you, what you can do is fold your collar in half in your hand and find the center point there. Place a pin at the center point and then you can line the center point up with the center back seam, which is right here. I'm just gonna line those up. I'll place my pin there. And now we're just gonna pin the collar in all the way around the neckline. Maybe it'll help you to pin it to one layer first before doing it to both. So yeah, it stops right here, the collar does. On both sides it will do that. So I'm just gonna work my way around and now pin both sides. We're gonna sandwich the collar in between the neckline is basically what we're gonna do. You know, use a lot of pins here, take your time. I think what makes sewing kind of fun is that it forces you to sit still and think. And when you start to rush things is when you make mistakes, although I rush things all the time, so. What you guys don't see in my videos is the amount of seam ripping that I do, particularly in these Patreon videos, because most of the time when you are watching me assemble something, I am assembling the new pattern for the first time. We've designed it on a computer and gone off of sketches, but actually creating the process and the correct way to assemble it is always so tricky, especially for someone like me that has a little bit of a learning disability and I freeze up when it comes to sewing patterns usually. So every time I release one of these for you guys, um, <laughs> you're literally watching me overcome a little bit of anxiety that I have about sewing patterns. So I do it for you, do it for the art. <laughs> okay, I'm just pinning my collar in the neckline here. Uh, the distance in between the fold here and where the collar stops is the same on this side as it is on the other, which is good. That means that we have done it correctly. Using a lot of pins here, I'm just gonna line everything up. I want this to be as perfect as possible. Okay, and now we are just gonna stitch all the way along this neckline here. Now you might be working with a lot of fabric here, so I think this might be the thickest part of the jacket for some of you, and if it is, just take your time and if you break a needle, switch it out. But this is also a focal point of the garment, so you wanna make sure that it looks good. Okay. 
Okay, one other little thing I'm gonna do is while I have the neckline like this, I am just gonna trim away a little bit of the seam allowance here. This would be a good place for you to overlock if you have a serger, just for a little extra strength. Uh, but if you don't, no worries. Maybe just clip it and then go back through and zigzag it to keep the edge a little strong or do a secondary stitch there. I just like, this is gonna be a lot of stuff going on once we flip it right side out. It's gonna lay beautifully, but you wanna make sure it's also strong. So I suggest doing that. We have now sewn the back hem of the cape. And now we are gonna work on the fronts here. So the front is still one wide piece, right? We did put our little tabs in here facing inwards. Now what we're going to do is fold the piece in half and we're gonna match up the bottoms here. This seam of the hem, um, the dart that we created in the side front should line up with the seam on the front and side front here. So just pin this at the bottom. And now we are going to sew across the bottom here at our half of an inch. Just like we did the back. All right, let's sew the bottom here. It should meet right below the pocket, which is also kind of nice. If we take a look here at the back lining that is currently on top of the back piece, if you take a look here at the back lining which is on top of the back piece currently, uh, we're missing the yoke at the top, you'll see that there is a one and a half inch difference here at the bottom. That's because when this is sewn together, it's gonna lift up the outside towards the inside a little bit. It's gonna create a little bit of a facing. So like, you know, if you're walking or the wind is blowing, you're not just gonna see the lining at the bottom, it's gonna let you see a little bit of the outside fabric as a buffer. So. What's important about this is we did sew these together evenly and what's gonna happen is it is going to lift. So when we are sewing the slit together, I'm gonna suggest starting at the top and working your way down because what that's going to do is it's going to show you that little bit of pinch here where it's brought up and then we can just sew that straight down and it's gonna secure that little part that's going to lift up rather than starting from the bottom and working your way up because you're gonna have a little bit of gap in fabric here because they are a little bit different in length. So start from the slit point and when we are securing the slit lining to the slit itself, start at the top, work your way down on every side because that's going to secure that bottom part and make sure that everything lays evenly when it's all lifted up and sewn together. All right, so now that we have our neckline sewn, we have our hem sewn. I did just kind of walk you through how this all lines up. So we're gonna be securing these now. So as you can see here, they're a little bit different in length. As you work your way down, see how this is just a little bit longer here? What we're gonna do is start at the top where the slit starts here, and we are just going to stitch right next to where we stopped, all the way down. So start pinning. Each slit point will have two seams, essentially. So. I am just gonna work my way down. You can see that the side front and the side front lining, they both have a little point here. Those do match up. Now our little tab, our little waist tab here is pinned in place. So we're just gonna sandwich that in between the lining and the outside. And let's work our way down here. So the front should actually line up perfectly towards the bottom. These distances are the same here. Now the back, you'll see if you start from the slit and work your way down pinning, the outside is longer. See that fold over right there? That's good. We wanna work down and we wanna pinch it and sew that down in a straight line because that's going to secure the outside towards the lining there to give us that little bit of phasing. So again, you'll see start stitching from the stopping point right here at the seam and we're gonna work our way down. This will not be one continuous long seam down both sides. We are gonna start from here down, 
That's one stitch. And then we're gonna stitch from here down as a secondary stitch. I know this might be a little tricky, so. If it helps you lay everything out flat so you can really see what you're looking at. Because at the moment, if it helps you, this is what we're sewing. It's just our slit here. Okay, so we're gonna start from the top up here, work our way down to the bottom, and then we're gonna start from the top where the stitch ended and work our way all to the bottom here. There we go. Now I'm just gonna start sewing, and I am gonna start sewing from where we stopped stitching here all the way down. You can see your little stitch mark that stops here. Now we're gonna work our way to the bottom. Let's work our way from the slit down. So I am just going to start my needle at the same exact point where we stopped stitching up here. Now I will say if you have a, if you have a narrow sewing foot, it might be really helpful for you right now. Uh, mine gets pretty close, so I think I'm okay, but we're just gonna sew this at half of an inch and work our way down here. Okay, got a little bit of a pivot there. to the other side here. I am just going to start my needle, the stopping point up here. Work my way down half of an inch. Now this is where our little fold over happened. I'm just gonna stitch right over it. All right, so now the cape is basically all the way sewn together. I know it looks crazy right now, but we are going to turn it all right side out from this access point. So just flip the cape right side out. Before you do that though, you might want to clip away a little bit of the seam allowance right here towards the slit opening at the top. I think that this is going to be a little bit bulky for you maybe, so i just going to trim away a little bit of that seam allowance. Also make sure all your straight pins are out. <laughs> here we go, I'm just going to trim away a little seam allowance there, a little baby bit here, just to kind of make a little room. All right, let's turn it right side out now. Do it carefully, you don't wanna bust that bottom seam. So it's basically the coat is three sections. It's two fronts, which will be their own little individual pieces. And then it's one back piece. So here's one of my fronts. Looks nice. And here is the back piece. Now you will need to go in and press these points out nice and pointy from the inside. That's why we left that little access point. But for now, just turn it all right side out and double check everything. What we're really gonna be looking for before we press it, because obviously pressing this is going to like make this garment, um, is we're really gonna be checking to make sure that we got the slit correct up here. So once this is pressed 
The lining should just be on the inside here, nice and flat, and then this will be pressed. So that's gonna look so clean and so beautiful. You might need to do a little security stitch right here by hand um, if you're having a hard time getting your lining to stay on the inside, but honestly, I think pressing it will absolutely help. But as you can see, the lining meets up nicely at the bottom. Don't see anything, it's gorgeous on the inside. And the inside here, see how this is pulled up just that little bit? It's gonna do that the whole way around the bottom of the garment. So I am going to work on our pressing now. Um, usually I do this on an ironing board, but for the sake of the video and showing you guys what I'm doing, I am gonna do it on my hard top here. Um, what's cool is you can now see that the, the little hidden pocket is completely hidden. So I'm gonna start on this edge over here because it is showing edge. Now, when you're pressing, you do wanna make sure that all these little points of the corners are pulled straight out. Um, this is truly like what I think makes a garment feel the most professional. It's when everything is pointy and like where it should be. Now, I have not done anything to touch the hem of this cape yet. And as you can see, it is kind of bubbling up and it's because we have not pressed it. Everything else has been pressed really nicely. So like I said earlier, what's gonna happen is a little bit of this is actually gonna fold up underneath here. And so we need to, I have it on my dress form. You could put it on yourself. You could put it on whoever's around you, but I'm just gonna go through and kind of pinch the bottom from the top to make sure everything is aligned. And then that way I can press everything and get that nice crisp line where it's supposed to lay. I'm just gonna work my way around. And then afterwards we can press. Let's iron the end. So the ironing basically just trains the fabric to lay where you want it to. Some fabrics iron better than others, uh, which is like, you know, the plight of honestly making clothing is just like understanding what your fabrics do. So this is a wool blend. I think it's a Jason Wu fabric from Mood. I saw it and it just screamed like Sherlock Holmes fall dark academia to me. Okay. Now we're gonna work our way up here towards the top. Nice, this is laying flat. We'll get to this one in a second. Like I said, you might wanna do a little security stitch here. I probably will do just a little baby one right there just to kind of secure that. This is an opening, it's gonna have a little tension. But so now that we have ironed this side, I'm gonna work my way on the bottom. nice and flat. Now let's iron the front edge. See how we did that on the fold earlier? This is now our front edge and it looks so nice and clean. I do suggest ironing around the neckline also. So this is where we have to sew the lining still. I'm just gonna kind of pin this out flat. And what I'm gonna do is just roll this under to match and then roll our lining down. We are gonna pin because we're going to hand stitch the lining. This is where we turned everything right side out. I'm just gonna pin it all. And then we are going to hand stitch all of this closed. Thank you. 
Okay, so let's talk about these tabs. So these essentially are going to hang, like if this is the front here, they're gonna hang behind your waist. And now you could connect these, you could hand sew them together. I'm gonna do a little button and buttonhole here. You could do a few of them to make them adjustable depending, but it's gonna control how tight it makes the front of this feel. Now it's gonna keep this fitted on you and allow you to have a little back band. So you would now add some buttonholes or buttons here, stitches, hook and eye, whatever it is, whatever kind of closure you wanna do, now is when you're going to add that here. So I have marked out where I'm going to be placing my buttons on here, and now I'm just gonna place my buttonholes on the front here, and then I will sew my buttons onto the other side, and then you're ready to wear it. If this is the first time you're trying a blazer pattern or something that's a little more, more intermediate, I'm proud of you guys for pushing yourself. It is a lot of steps, but really if you take your time and just kind of pause the video when you need to and then restart it, I think it's a really fun way to get you guys into making a little bit more complex things. Also, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, you can always reach out to me on the Patreon. Me or one of my team members can help you guys out, help solve some problems, or you can join the Discord community, which is our free community. Uh, it's full of people that are crafters and quilters and sewers, and anyone that can help you out. It's a really great place to get going if you're looking for a little creativity. Always, always, always tag me if you guys decide to make the patterns, because it really brings me a lot of joy to see your creations.